Pastor Rock mentioned a little while ago. Isn't that something Pastor Rock? You heard Pastor Rock mention a little while ago. You're talking to me? Pastor Rock. No, I'm Apostle Rock. You're Pastor Rock. All right. Uh, you heard him mention about the, the lady who believed the word of God. And, and, and we have such a media that is really afflicting people's minds all over the country and all over the world. And it's a powerful uh, property to, to possess that you can, you can speak a word or show a picture and you can change so many millions of lives. And you can cause people to not believe God or not trust or not hold on to God. But you and I, we are believers. See, everybody had the opportunity to celebrate that right then. You didn't do it. See, you and I are believers. We believe what God says, regardless of what people in the world are saying. And you hear Pastor Rock say it every Sunday morning. I, I believe the word, you know, and he go through that, that whole scenario, whatever. You and I are believers. And regardless of what's happening in the world and what people in the world are saying, you and I ought to always go back to the foundation of our, of our building blocks, of our house, and see what God says about, about you and I. In Psalms 1, he says this. And I've got a new Bible up here this morning, so you guys please uh, bear with me a little bit. Uh, my wife gave me this Bible, and I'm trying to use it as best as I can. I like my old friend. How many of you like your old friend? You know an old pair of shoes feel better than a new pair of shoes? You guys, well, an old Bible feels better to me. It's like an old friend. I've been carrying him for a long time. And it feels better to me than a new friend. But, you know, but we have to get used to new friends, right? All right. In Psalms 1, it's, it's very prophetic that the psalm starts off with, blessed is the man. All right? Blessed. All right? That word comes from, it's handed down to us through the, uh, the, the principles of, of Abraham and Melchizedek, as you heard me mention just a while ago, when, when Melchizedek and Abraham met, the, uh, the proper way for the blessing to be passed on was that the hands were laid on you. And so when Abraham met Melchizedek, Melchizedek blessed him. The Bible says that he blessed him. It means he, he walked up to him, Rick, and he spoke to him, and he says, Blessed be Abraham you know, and God most high and all that. He spoke all of that and he laid his hands on Abraham. And so at that, at that moment, Abraham received the impartation of a blessing, all right? And at, at, the, and at that impartation of the blessing, Abraham conducted that through his sons, through Isaac. He blessed Isaac. And then Isaac blessed Jacob. Remember Jacob and, and Esau? When Jacob, Jacob came in and, you know, disguised himself in the skin and, and all of that, and, 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 and uh, Isaac reached over and blessed him. And then here comes, here, comes, uh, here comes little old poor little, you know, Esau in later on talking about, I want, where's my blessing? He says, I already gave it, bless it away. I can't, I, can't, I can't do this thing again. It's because the blessing that's given out is transferred to the generation. All right? And, and so when you, when, you, when you study the word and you look at all of these principles, you can run back and go, okay, do our people really understand how blessed they really are? And then David comes along and he says, blessed is a man. It means a man that's in Abraham's covenant, that's in keeping with God. This man is blessed. And you need to read and see what you're blessed in. And you need to hold on to it. You need to put your name right there. I don't know. You, I've told you guys for many years to write your names there. You guys got your names there? Amen. You guys got your names there? Anybody don't have your name there? We got to get you blessed today. Write your name right there by Psalms 1 at the beginning of it. Blessed is, you know, and you don't have to scratch the man out because you might have to read it one day. But then at least put your name over top of the man because you are the man if you're blessed. You guys with me? See, when you're blessed and you walk down the street, people know that's the man. You know, when you go in the store and you load two baskets of groceries up, you know, and you push them on up there and other people just walking around, got a little, the little blue basket, trying to get a little bit, you know, and get back home and talking about how much it costs. And they see you spend three or four hundred dollars at the grocery thing. They look at you and they go like, man, who are, how many people they got to feed? It's not that. It's just that you just bless. Y'all looking at me like, oh, man, I haven't thought about those kinds of times. Well, you need to think about those times. We're not talking waste. We're talking abundance. Amen. We're talking you having more than enough. 
all right, that your house be blessed. And this is why it was so important for you guys to bring that resurrection seed because you guys just don't understand what it does in the spiritual realm. Prophetically, in the spiritual realm, it does great things, and the enemy knows it. And he looks at you, and he sees that you are willing to sacrifice the things that you need in your life to give to God. He knows that, and that puts a, it's like putting a branding iron on him. It burns him to see people that, that need themselves but will give to the kingdom of God. It burns him big time, you know. And so, so when you gave your seed, you, you were telling the devil, I'm smacking you in the face because I believe God more so than, than I'll ever believe you. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Greater is God in me than he who is in the world. Greater is he who is in me. So because God is greater in me, my life is greater. My church is greater. My checkbook is greater. My business is greater. My relationships are greater. Everything about you is greater because greater is he who lives in you than he who lives in the world. So when you do things like that and you go against the ordinary, you go against the normal, you know, and you, and you, and you do something extraordinary like that, you just, you just, like, anybody ever been back slapped? Huh? I don't mean slap like this. It's one thing to get slapped like this, but it's another thing to get smacked like that, man. It's like, you know, like, 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 oh, man, that's, 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 that's more embarrassing than to get smacked like that. It's somebody to back slap you like, you know? And, and to back slap the enemy, you know, is to let him know that I believe that God is my source. See? And, you, and you're coming to the age. Hunt somebody and say, we're approaching. You're coming to the age that you're going to have to depend on God more than you're going to have to depend on all the other signals or signs in the earth. I pity people. Years ago, I used to preach like this when I first started. And I used to tell people, listen, to go to the doctor is to lower yourself on the same plane that every worldly person do when you're believing for healing. Then I found out if it wasn't for the doctors, a lot of our Christian people would die. So I started saying, listen, okay, well, go to the doctors, get what he need, tell him whatever, whatever, so you won't pass. But the highest form of faith is to believe God for your healing, Amen. for yourself, and to stay whole. That's why when years ago, I used to see my grandfather. He didn't know a whole lot about the Lord, but I used to see him every meal he ate. He sat down, take his hat off, put it to the side, put his hands there, and he'd bless his food. And I saw that as a kid. Later on, I found out how important it was to sanctify what's going in my body so that it doesn't act like everything else that goes into my body. You know, some stuff you don't know about, but if anything that you put in your mouth, you drink or whatever, you ought to sanctify it because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. All right? He says this, blessed. How many of you guys really feel you're blessed? Amen. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm reading King James Version. Nor standeth in the un, un, nor in the counsel of it, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight. Now, we got to go past the next words. We got to stop right here. His delight. What is delight? All right? It's called highest pleasure. That's what delight is. It's called highest pleasure. I I'm teaching a little bit, so I'm not going to shout a whole lot, but I'm teaching a little bit. It's called highest pleasure. So it is my highest pleasure to sit down with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and to allow him to teach me, not me teach him. How much pain I'm going through, how much I need, whatever. But allow him to teach me the importance and the understanding of the Word of God for my life every day. Blessed is the man who does what? Who delights. You can skip over there all that nasty part there. Who delights, all right? Who delights in the law of the Lord. And in his law do he meditate day and night. Now see, we have to understand, if I'm blessed, there are some requirements. When you see a person riding and they say, the Lord gave me this, 
He had to do something to get that. All right, he didn't just show up one day at the parking lot, tell the man, the salesman, I want that new car, and they said, okay, go, 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 get quick, 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 quick. Get off the parking lot with it before anybody find out. No, that don't happen. You have to know some things. You have to do some things. You have to experience some things. And years ago, I'm telling you, I began to experience some things that I began to find out that was not told in the church. Nobody told me in the church that the Lord wanted me to be blessed, Keelan. Not just blessed as a word, say blessed as I'm being humble and, you know, and, uh, and, and respectful because it's in the Bible. No, God put it in there because he wants you to have it. Not because he just wants you to respect it. He wants you to have the blessed. And what is the blessed? Hmm, let's look at this. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Roots are deep. Always, even when it dries up, there's water under the bed. That the roots always get refreshing. The roots are always there. The roots go down at the riverbed. The roots go down. And sometimes I've been in riverbeds or creek beds where, where, you, where you're walking and there are rocks and things. And all of a sudden, there's a piece of wood there. There's a root there where that tree that was up on that bank has extended its roots down under that, under that creek bed. So that it, no matter how much water is in that creek, it always feeds. And no matter how much water is not in that creek, it still feeds. And so you and I have to understand that no matter what's going on in our life, if the creek dry up, let me tell you something. Be like Elijah. Believe God to still be fed. That's a supernatural, supernatural faith. Believe God that even things that don't supposed to happen in your life will happen in your life. Who in the world would believe that a crow would feed you? A raven would feed you. But he believed it because God told him. You go down there and the ravens are going to bring you food every day. He believed that. And this is what God is telling us. A blessed person will have to go and face things in this life. But the outcome of it is that you survive. Many others won't. Many people died during Elijah's days when there was a famine. Many people died. You and I don't have to die in these days when we see people in the famine. I told, I told kids a couple of years ago, I said, listen, the Lord has already shown me this thing about this housing thing. He's already told me about this housing stuff. I'm telling y'all right now, y'all can believe, believe this and believe that and do all this stuff. But the housing market is not going to go back to full bloom until 2014. It ain't going to happen. You might say, you're going to get a hit here and a hit there, but it ain't going to pick up until 2014. Are you seeing hints of that, Rick? It's coming back to life, isn't it? But two years ago, let me tell you something, just get one house sold, to get two houses sold, to get a house over here in the neighborhood, to get out, you, you, were, you were looking like crabs in a pot. You couldn't find one that's going to get out. See, why? Because he told me that this was going to happen, you know? And I'm going like, okay, I see this. So I told the kids here, and I don't know about the realists, you know, the other realists all over the world. Some of them stopped doing business. Some stopped this, stopped that. But a blessed person has the opportunity to even in times when things are bad, to still have foresight from God, to be able to see ahead, to be able to know, to have the warnings, prophetic warnings in your life that you can see ahead and prepare your way and to know that this is what I must do in this time. It's not going to be like it was yesterday, but I've got to get through this thing so that tomorrow, when tomorrow get here, I'm still a survivor. Some people don't survive when times get bad, but blessed people can Look what he says about a blessed person. Anybody in the house? Yeah. Hmm. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in the season, and his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, how is it that we got so many people that don't know what to do? Whatever you do, God said it would prosper if you're a blessed man. What? Whatever you do. It didn't say sit on the couch and you're blessed. It says whatever you do, this is a blessed man. This is a blessed person. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. He says whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. Man, you want to see some people worry. Just go to the gas pump. Just sit at the gas pump one day with a video camera and just record some things, which you could hear. Or people inside the store. You know, people walking around in the grocery store. Just go somewhere where people have to congregate community-wise and gather something in for their livelihood and, why, and, and listen at what's going on. You will hear all kinds of stuff going on. What is this nation going to? This and that. This nation is going to kingdom living in a little bit. 
Because Christians are going to get up off their lazy butts and going to do something about the way they've been living. If my people who call by my name, yeah, that's us, yeah. The ungodly are not so, but they're like the chaff which the wind drive away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The church is not made for sinners. The church is made for the righteous. That's right. We ought to get people born again. We invite them to come to church, but you ought to get them born again out there and bring them to church so that they can grow up. Most of us, we want to bring them to church and let the pastor get them saved. It ain't going to happen. That don't work. It don't work that way. We're going against the word of God. For the Lord knoweth the way of Chastine and Ella. You got your names down there? If you don't have them, write them now. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. That's you. But the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. So you have the opportunity for you and your household to be very blessed. Let's go to Psalms 84. Psalms 145. Psalms 146. We go to all of them. Let's go to Psalms 146. I love 145, 146. I love them all. Because all have some intricate part in your life of becoming. Pastor Milton was going to preach on you becoming, and he'll get you next week with you becoming. And we need to become. It's the greatest power of the kingdom to become. Become blessed instead of cursed. You know, my, my personal natural family, whenever I see them, the first thing that they think about me is that, oh man, he got plenty of money. I had, I had a car. I, I remember uh, I remember when my wife had, my wife used to always want a Cadillac, so she got her Cadillac. And when she got a Cadillac, we put this uh, this little uh, the starter on where you can you can stand in the house and cut it on, you know, and it start up in your park in the, in the garage and whatever, you know. And so uh, I remember one day I was down at my uncle's house, and uh, I pulled up in there, and uh, my, one of my uncles, Walter, he I was at his house, but my uncle Eddie was there, <laughs> and uh, and I pulled up in there and, and got out, man, and uh, cut the car off, and I got out. Now I love to hear these guys talk about the old times. You know, but when it comes down to the things of God, they don't say nothing around me. And uh, so uh, Eddie, Eddie looked at me and he says, uh, boy, the Lord didn't bless you, ain't he? I said, yeah, he sure has. He said, are you riding around that nice new car? And I said, uh, why don't you take it for a spin? And so I had, I had the key in my pocket, right? So I hit the starter thing and it started up. When it started up, boy, and he was standing there looking at it. He said, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> He said, <laughs> he says, oh, no, you don't get me in that car. And I said, man, the Lord want to take you for a ride. You know, he didn't know anything about the starters. <laughs> I told him, I said, the Lord want to take you for a ride. He was going like, oh, no, you ain't get me in that car, boy. No way, you know. Then I told him what it was. He still wouldn't do it, you know. But people have a knack of looking at you because you go to church and they say, oh, this about you, all that about you. And they don't know that you've got to go through some things. Because God will never leave you like you were like them when he found you. God will change your life. And Psalms 146 says this. See, we're talking about being blessed. And I'm, I'm very blessed, but I'm expecting some greater blessings. I'm expecting the glory of God. He says, praise you, the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, excuse me. <laughs> See, y'all missed out on that. You missed out on the ceremonies. Ceremonies all through the Bible. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I'm going to sing praises to my God while I have any being. See, I'm a blessed man. And a blessed man is going to always be doing that. You know, I go in the store. And sometimes I'm sitting in the store and I'm walking around. And I start speaking in tongues, man. People come up to you because they don't, they don't know. They think you're from another country. <laughs> they, laugh, laugh. they come up to me Larry, and they, be, and they stand up there by and they, and they, and they be listening you know they, they kind of like cock their ear but they don't they don't actually turn to actually are oh, you from another country you know and then I, I just keep on just keep on speaking in tongues and whatever and then they'll walk away I see them sometimes walking with their head like this like something wrong with that man you know but but they don't understand when I'm in that store I'm talking to the Lord about what's in that store 
See, there are things that God has ordained for seasons in your life that can become available to you, but you're not expecting them. You're not expecting someone to walk up and, and, and make an offer to you for something that you may want that's a whole lot less than you see on that little piece of paper that's stuck on it. You got to realize that. And when, you, when you're praying in the Spirit, you're talking to the Lord about where you are and what's going on around you and the opportunities of the day that's in that place that you're in. And most of us, we just walk in there and look at everything like everybody else do and walk out paying everything that everybody else paid. And that's not the case for you and I. See, you and I have been given all things that pertain to life and to godliness. And so I praise him no matter where I am. I'm not, I don't have to walk in there and just sing out some English words. You know, I can praise him in the spirit. So you ought to learn to praise him as a blessed man so that wherever you are, you're continually growing. You're continually increasing no matter where you are. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I will praise the Lord. I will, I, will, I will live. While I live, I will praise the Lord, and I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. One day they're going to walk away from you. One day they're going to tell you no. One day they're not even going to return your call. His breath goes forth and he returneth to his earth. And in that very day, his thoughts perish. Happy is he. That's me. Happy. You need to hunt somebody right there. If you read that right. Happy is he who have the God of Jacob for his help. That's the God of blessings. The blessing one that we were talking about over in Psalms 1. That's the God who's blessing your life. Happy is the man that have the God of Jacob for his help. Whose hope is in the Lord, his God. Now, see, every day I know that there are many, many tools that God will use to bless my life, but I've got to keep my eyes focused on God who gives the tools. And so every day you've got to, be, you've got to look at, you know, some Lord, I don't know what's going to happen today, but I know something's going to happen. And I don't know who you're going to use, you know, but I know you're going to use somebody. And somebody's going to bless me today. Somebody's going to give me favor. Somebody's going to give me a kind word. Somebody's going to say something that they, they have no imagination that it will mean so much to me. Somebody's going to move for me. Somebody's going to do something in my life. Somebody's going to bless my family. Somebody's going to do something for the church. Somebody's going to do something good in my life today because I expect God's best every day. So when you be walking around talking about happy is the man who have the God of Jacob for his help. I got God. I'm a happy man. I'm a happy person. Rick, happy my year. Y'all got that right? See, so you don't have to walk around because the world is going, you know, through a whole lot of stuff. And you be going like, oh, man, they're going to raise gas, the price of gas again. No, Lord, I'm getting a raise on my job. Because for every, can, can I give y'all something that y'all hold on to? All right. For every complaint, there's always been a provision. Before you had a complaint, God had already provided. So before every complaint, God has already made provision. And when Christians get that idea right, when you see gas going up, you'll be going like, man, somebody must be getting ready to bless my socks off. Because <laughs> God is going, if there's a complaint in what's happening in my life, God has already made the provision for it. See, that we miss it because we are the blessed. We're the blessed. Jesus said to, to ask. He says to seek and to knock. He gave these stages for us to progress. You know, when I ask someone about something, say I'm asking Rick about something, and I'm talking to Rick about it, I'm asking Rick for information, right then the thing is far away. But I'm asking. Here's, here are the stages. But then, after I've asked Rick and he gives me what he understands about it, I start going out and I start seeking stuff. Search and find, search and seek. Remember I told you guys about that in communication? I begin to search out things and I begin, and, I, I, and when I search out things, I'm getting a little bit closer, Keelon. But buddy, when I get to the door and I knock, I'm on the outside saying I want to be in. I've gone from asking to knocking to getting ready to go in. That's progression. Those are stages. See? 
And so when we're going to live and we're going to walk in the blessings of God, we've got to do the things the way Jesus laid things out. We've got to be able to be Christians that say, I'm blessed. I don't know how it's going to happen today, Poop, but guess what is going to happen? It's going to happen. Why? Because I'm a happy man. I've got the God of Jacob for my help. Look what he says here. Happy is he. I don't hear nobody saying nothing. Look at y'all. Y'all ain't got a revelation of that, have you? Happy is he that have the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord, who made heaven and the earth and the sea and all that there is, and who keepeth true forever. Excuse me? Which executed judgment for the oppressed. You ever been oppressed? So guess what? Before your complaint ever was, provision was made. All I'm doing is showing you what's in the word. Which executed judgment for the oppressed, which give you food to the hungry. Before you got hungry, he's already said, I'll give you food. Before you had a complaint, there's provision. <laughs> Woo! The Lord opened the eyes of the blind. Oh, you got blind, but he made provision for you. He opened the eyes of the blind. You are blessed. You want to see how to get that done, how to walk away? I'm just trying to help you guys. Hunt somebody. Say, Pastor, trying to put a band-aid on your, on your bad problem. So when you go home, you can get some Neosporin. Take the herd out. Read the word. Hmm. The Lord opened the eyes of the blind. The Lord raised up those that are bowed down. You mean if you go by being bowed down, God's already told you to raise you up? Again, provision is made before the complaint. Hmm. The Lord loves the righteous. Before you got born again, he was in love with you. I'm trying to show you how blessed you are. So that when you walk out of here and you get in your car and you go home or wherever you're going today, did you begin to exercise that God is with you? See, the power of Jesus Christ in the church is only evident when you have Jesus in your face. It's only evident when you walk around and you pray for somebody or you tell somebody they're going to have a better day or you bless somebody's life or you do something for somebody or you go pay an electric bill that they don't even know you're paying or you go stand there and when they get in a grocery line, you buy the food or you do something. The, the evidence that, that Jesus is in the church is the power that you have to relieve the suffering that men and women are going through. If you're living every day for you, you're living every day for you. It says this, the Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the father, listen, the widow. But the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. Something seems like a pattern here, though. The way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. The way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign in ever, forever, even thy God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. In 2 Kings chapter 5, Pastor Rock mentioned it a little while ago. The widow lady comes to the prophet, and he acts. She acts. You know, she says, my husband, he's dead, blah, blah, blah. He says, what can I do for you? And she says, he says, what do you have in your house? And she says, I've got just a little bit of oil in a jar. That's all I got, just a little bit. And he says, okay, that's all I need. Because when that seed hit my kingdom word, that seed is going to pay your debt and give you enough to live on while your lazy sons go find some work. <laughs> I just added that in there. That's not in the Bible, all right? Somebody go look at it. What, what is that in the Bible? <laughs> I just added that in there. And it says that he told her, specifically go borrow all the vessels that you can bring them in your house and then shut the door get some separation if you want to get blessed don't let the world look in at what's happening in your life don't let everybody that's passing by your home see what's going on in your house don't let strangers in because they're going to bring their unbelief and whatever. Smith Wigglesworth wouldn't even allow you to bring a newspaper in his house. Shut the door. Shut it up. You want to be blessed? Here's the word. Shut the door and then pour out. 
part of that little that you had that the word came to. See? I don't have to come back. You just do what I told you to do. And William, it says that she sent her sons out to borrow. Some people probably didn't allow them to have vessels because they figured that they were already under bondage. They may sell them, try to sell their, pay their debt off. He said, he shut the door. Chemico, they begin to pour out. Now, this is the word of God. The word of God was in that oil. That it would not stop. Unless they stopped it. And it's getting quiet. See, the word of God was in the oil. You will not stop unless they stop you. And it says, Rick, that it didn't stop until they stopped it, Jeff. God didn't stop it. They stopped it. If those guys had bought in 500 pots, it would only have stopped based on their limitation, not God's. Shaking your head, Miss Farmer. You getting this? You and I have the word that we're blessed. Nobody can stop it. I have a promise of life that all of life has been given unto me that I may richly enjoy. Nobody can stop it but me. I'm preaching better than you guys getting it. I really hope you take the can home and open it up a little later on or put it in the freezer or do something. But when God gives you a word, you're the only one that will limit it because there's no limitation to what he says to you. And he told that lady, shut the door, pour out. He says, I need to, in fact, he told her, he says, go borrow and don't borrow a few. He told her, he said, because he knows. He knew that when God started, God wasn't going to stop. He knew that once the word of God was on that thing, that material thing, that that material thing, whatever that word was spoken to, is just like the sun and the moon and the stars and everything today. God spoke to them and they haven't stopped yet. Only man who fell put a limit to God. And so when God calls you blessed, when he says you are highly favored, when he tells you that you are more than a conqueror, when he tells you you are a world overcomer, when God tells you that you are the head and not the tail, you're the only one that limits that. You're blessed. So when he says you give and it shall be given unto you, you're the only one that limit that. Anything that he shares with you, it will continue to go until you stop it, Larry. If you stop it, it'll be stopped. And it says that when that, the oil stopped, the woman was surprised. She told her son, she says, bring me yet another vessel. And they said, ain't no more, mom. <laughs> she was going like, oh, Lord, I want to see this oil keep on running. Bring me a well or something. Let's, she wanted to keep on. She wanted to see it continue to run. Because let me tell you something. When you have your hands on a blessing, and it's pouring out. And it's not like you're standing here holding it like this so that the contents can stay. But you have it like this, Henson, and you're pouring it out. And you're seeing the jars filled up. But you're looking inside and you, all you see is that little bit. But, you, but you're seeing the jars being filled up and every time they sit one on the floor, but you're looking in there going, and it's still running. When God supernaturally bless you, don't let nobody stop it. They may look in there and say, oh, you, all you got is a little bit. That's why he told them, shut the door. Don't let them look. 
Shut the door. Stop letting everybody see what God's doing in your life. And then come out and celebrate what God's doing and whatever. But, but don't let people be looking up and deciding how much you're going to get. It says that I'm blessed because I meditate in the word day and night. I stay before the Lord. My roots are deep under the, under the creek bed. I, I got the water flowing. I got life going. My seasons are coming. Why when I'm, gonna let, when I'm pouring out a blessing and I'm being a blessing, I'm going to let somebody else tell me how big my blessing going to be. It says, farmer, she was pouring out, and her sons probably were going like, what in the world? Because they kept bringing her vessels. And Mike, every time they would sit one down, I'm sure they would glance up at that little jar of oil, which wasn't big as this, and they would see it pouring out, Mike. And they'd look up in there and say, well, where's all that coming from? Where, where's that coming from, Pastor Tracy? I mean, I, I see him, I see her pouring out, and you know, this vessel got, and my brother just set this big jaw over there, put another one, and still run. Where's it coming from? I know mom's thinking, the word of God. That's where it's coming from. The word of God is fulfilling itself, and it's unlimited. And you're the only one that can bring limitation. So when you look at the word that he says, happy is the man who had the God, God of Jacob for his help. Put your name there. When it says, blessed is, put your name there. When it says, you're more than a conqueror, put your name there. And get in the habit of making confessions about how blessed you are. So that you don't let the media of this world, I call them false prophets. You don't let the false prophets of this world tell you how you ought to live. Now, to them, they, they're true prophets. Because that's what they live by. They live by facts. But in the spiritual realm, those facts are not true. Not in the spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm, you and I, it's, it's just like the man who was born again versus the man who was, who was a sinner. The man who was a sinner is from the world. But when truth came to him, see, it was a fact that he was a sinner and that he sinned. But when truth came to him, the spiritual side of us living, he became born again. He's no longer a sinner. So the facts that, that they have, are not true when it comes to you and I. Y'all going to get that one day. See, you and I have truth that changes those natural facts. Amen? I hope something I said this morning will inspire you to, to maintain your ability of knowing that you are a very blessed person.